Oh, Rick Mail, how he made us laugh. The former head of BBC Comedy, John Plowman, worked with Rick Mail on Bottom and many other things as well and joins us from our London studio. Very good morning to you. A big good shock morning. for everyone, this. Um, how, how do you best remember him? Well, I best remember him partly as a man who broke my arm in uh, 1978 when he was a, an 18-year-old student. Uh, trying to throw me into a swimming pool fully clothed. Uh, it's all right, I forgave him. Uh, and, and also as the guy on bottom, because I produced bottom, and, and the 18-year-old student is quite important because that's what he remained, at least. That was his sort of comedy persona. Uh, Sex-starved, desperate, braggadocio was, was kind of what he did, and he was, he was wonderful at it, but also nervous. Um, I remember on bottom, he would say, look, John, if you've got any notes for me, uh, give them to aid. Uh, if you've got any notes for me sort of an hour or two before the show, give them to aid, because I'll be in the loo. And, and he was. He was very nervous. He was, there he was, throwing up. And then he would come out, and immediately the lights were on and the camera was turning. He was, he was entirely Rick. Yeah. Or Wick. Um, <laughs> it, no, he, a terrible... It's a terrible loss. Yeah. And, and how could you dislike a man who's first Edinburgh show after university was called Death on the Toilet. Yeah. He and, uh, he and Aid Edmondson, with whom he used to appear live, and, uh, and Alexi Sell, French and Saunders, they were the comic strip in, in Soho in the early 80s, yeah. and they launched, really, yeah. it was a new genre, a new wave of it British was, comedy. It, yes, it was. Yes. It was a sort of reaction to frilly shirted Batley Variety Club kind of comedians who, who they thought were... were doing sort of sexist, racist material, and they wanted to do something different. Uh, and in the way of these things, if you put yourself relatively close to the heart of things, and they were there they were in Soho, you get noticed. And so the press and, and television uh, jumped on them, as not literally, but, but obviously, you know, mm. grabbed them. And, and they were all, they were a, a wonderful group and, and kind of became the mainstream very quickly. Um, so, so many fabulous roles which we all enjoyed so much. What was your, what was your one you most enjoyed seeing him in, working with him? Well, working with him, yeah, there was a bottom which was just him and Aid stuck apparently on a, on a big wheel uh, over th Hammersmith. There isn't a big wheel in Hammersmith viewers, just in case you think you've missed it. Um, and, and they were, the, the, notionally everybody had gone home and there they were stuck. And they'd written themselves, because they wrote the show as well, they'd in a way written themselves entirely into a corner. The only way to get out of it was to bring on, quite literally, the hand of God. And so a huge papier-mâché hand <laughs> uh, came in at the end of the uh, half hour, onto which they climbed in order just to get themselves out of the thing. <laughs> it, they, I mean, it was... a. It was a joy, and he's a terribly sad loss. Mm. And he, he caught the sort of the, the, the flavour of the times, if you like, in the young ones, when he's sort of the spotty Herbert Rick, and then yes. just shortly afterwards, politically, is Alan Bastard in yes. his own sitcom. Yes, yes, and 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 in a way, you could say Alan Bastard was really still, was also an 18-year-old student, trying very hard <laughs> and failing. Uh, that was his great. Uh, that was the thing he kind of latched onto. Uh, the uh, first telly I seem to think was, um, if it wasn't a comic strip thing, was Kevin Turvey in a show called Kick Up the 80s. And Kevin Turvey was a very dull man from Birmingham. And I remember talking to Rick about it and he said, well, you know, I was sitting on the train coming up to Manchester or Birmingham or wherever it was done, thinking, what am I going to do? And he created the character on the train. Mm -hmm. uh, at least, so he said, wrote it on the train and then, and then did it and he then had to do it for the, <laughs> for the next year or so. Um, did he have a favourite, as far as you know, or not? I don't know. I don't know. I think him and Aid, it must have been that... You know, it was, it was hard work, but, but they had such a good time and they gave us such a good time. <laughs> yeah, it certainly did. John, thanks very much thanks for joining so us. John Palmer, remembering Rick Mayer.